That's a good way to segue to the next speaker, who I don't want to give an introduction to, except to say this is um, Heather Brooks, who I've had the pleasure to work with over the last month or two. Well, thank you, Emmanuel, for inviting me. Um, I'll, I'll let you all know this is my first opportunity to speak publicly um, with, with my story. And uh, so be kind. <laughs> I'm, I'm a newbie um, to uh, this um, Molly and MDMA. And so I'll uh, log in here and I'll tell you tell you our story. That's my son, Bo. Um, I'm going to try not to be emotional. No guarantees, though. He died um, five months ago at Paradiso in Washington. Absolutely a, a really phenomenal human being, phenomenal human being. And uh, I'm devastated. My family's devastated and our community is devastated because we lost a really, really um, special person. Um, Bo's one of those, those new to the scene, a newbie. Um, he had used ecstasy his senior year of high school at his senior prom. I didn't know about it. Um, I found out about it just during uh, his, you know, after his death when his friends were letting me know, you know, okay, this is what's been going on. And um, so he had tried, he, he, was new to the to the scene. He was invited to go to Paradiso Music Festival um, on in June, end of June, um, and uh, his friends, um, ten of them, uh, were all high school buddies, um, getting together and planned to have a great weekend. You know, really just, you know party it up and have a great time and reconnect. Um, and uh, they, um, they uh, didn't know what they were doing. They had no idea. And this all speaks to what Emmanuel has been discussing about, you know, education and the lack of education and, um, you know, how do we get information out to kids? To, I say kids because he's my kid, but you're young adults, um, and and keep them safe. And it's hard. It's it's as a parent, I have been on this five month, you know, trajectory of trying to figure out what the hell happened. What the hell happened to my child? And I'm still, tr I'm still trying to figure it out. But what I do know is that he and his friends made some really, really, um, mis they made some mistakes. They, and it, mistakes that weren't necessarily their fault. They didn't know how to find the right information. They didn't know what they didn't know. Um, and we need to, you know, in order to save, save kids, save young adults, we have to be able to point them in the right direction and give them guidance. And as a mom, you know, I'm just, I'm right out of suburbia. I had no idea. I'm like, well, who is Molly? You know, what? And I'm, I, I, I wouldn't even know to initiate a conversation with, with Bo about Molly, because it is not on my radar. So how do you get it on, get it, how do you bring it into the home to have those conversations, to help your child stay alive, stay safe? Because I understand that you're gonna make a choice to use. And by me telling you, 
not to do it, you're still going to do it. But what I can do is say, hey, Bo, you know, I know you're going to Paradiso this weekend. You know, let's have a conversation. Let's not, let's not, you know, what are the, what are the right ways of taking Molly? Did you test your drug? You know, I, I, I can't, I couldn't provide any sort of guidance whatsoever because I, as a parent, am not educated. So that's, you know, that's part of my, my, I want to say mission, is I, when Bo died, um, I, he was five hours away from me. The coroner said I couldn't go see him because it was going to, he was considered a, uh, you know, not a homicide, but it was being investigated as if it's a homicide. So I have my child, you know, dead in the coroner and I can't go see him. I had a lot of time, a full week, to be able to start researching on what is going on here and talk to his friends and try and figure things out and take a look at his text messages, <laughs> which is revealing. This is, Bo is in blue and his buddy since grade school is in the white. And this just highlights kind of the thought process and the inexperience that, um, that Bo had. Um, hey, this is his friend, hey, do you know how much Molly you want? And Bo says, I'm not really sure, man. What's like the normal amount to get? Clueless, clueless. Probably like two to four each day, depending on how much you want to roll. Well, we know from Emmanuel that, you know, you, you don't, that's it's way too much, way too much. Two to four points is two to 400 milligrams. Right. And then they go on to talk about the cost. And then Bo pauses and says, yeah, you know, that is expensive. When do you need to know how much I want? And then his friend ends it with, I'll just get extra because I know people will want it. So inexperience, ill-informed, and Molly's Molly's accessible. They're doing it. You guys, your guys are doing it. So, you know, how do we do it safely? So this conversation that they were having could have been a lot different. Could have been, it could have been, you know, fact-based. It could have been um, pointing Bo in, you know, to websites that could have informed him. Um, there's a lot of information that could have been shared, but his best friend didn't know better, Bo didn't know better, so it's just sharing, passing information, bad information, bad information. Um, and then this is what happens, you know? Um, you have you know, a huge festival, 27,000 plus people, in an environment that is not safe. It's not safe. Not, they're, they're going there and they're not equipped. They're not set up to take care of themselves. You know, it's, it's you know, a festival that's days long. It's a, in a heat wave situation. Um, no shade, I mean, look, hardly any shade. Not enough water stations. Caps being taken off the water bottles so you, you can't, keep your water full, you've got um, conscious crew, which are, which great, they're, they're, I mean, I'm so glad the conscious crew are there because they're the ones that found Bo, but they're overwhelmed with dozens upon dozens of very, very sick people. Sick not only because they've taken drugs that they probably didn't know they were taking, but the heat in itself is very, very dangerous. And uh, Bo was one of seven very critically ill, hyperthermic patients 
in the medic tent, and then dozens more having seizures. What do you do when you're an emergency medicine physician, which they had emergency medicine physicians on staff, one in that tent, and I spoke with him. He's horrified. He will never ever volunteer or work for um, this type of event again. He was put in a situation where he was not able to help um, critically ill patients and uh, didn't have the right equipment, didn't, didn't even have thermometers to be able to know who was hyperthermic. Um, nearest hospital is this little tiny hospital, has two emergency department beds, with overwhelmed with patients. And they've been dealing with this for years now. This is not, Bo is not the first death. There were two deaths this year in June. There was another death two years before. So they've had three deaths in two years, or three years. Um, and then no life flight available. They were 40 minutes out. So just a, a disaster waiting to happen. And you've got Live Nation. We all know Live Nation, they're huge billion dollar industry and USC is is the EDM concert promoter in the in the Pacific Northwest and they're making a bank load of money making a bank load of money and honestly I don't think they really give a rip who dies they don't care who dies because they're making a lot of money and it's very, very scary and very, very maddening that they continue to do this. And yes, there's a whole lot of people who have a great time. I've been on the blogs and I've, I posted Bo's story and I, people were brutal to me, like putting it on the fault of Bo. And I, yeah, he has responsibility. He made that choice. Um, but he, he paid, he paid with his life. So now it's up to us to not ever let this happen to another young adult. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that other than what we're doing here tonight, spreading awareness, spreading education. How are we going to keep ourselves safe? How are we going to change policies? And I just, I added, it, I want you to know Bo is a person because I think so often we, we just hear these headlines, you know, so-and-so died here and there, you know, it's like, oh, another death, turn the page. But these are real people, these are you guys. And this is my son who is loved, loved and it has such an impact on people's lives that in high school, a young man um, wrote me a note and said, Bo saved my life because Bo spent time with him to reach out to him, recognize that he was somebody in need that needed support. And Bo made a, a, a sincere impact on his life. And this is Bo. This is Bo's autopsy. This is his, his, the report. And I, it is incredibly painful for me to read this. But I have to face it straight on. My son died, and I'm going to take it straight on. He died at 22 years old at an outdoor concert in very high ambient temperature, 101 to 107 degrees for three days. When they opened him up, his, his entire cavity was filled with blood. His organs had shut down. That happened within a very short period of time. One of his friends saw him at 7.30. He 
he went off to, to meet a girl he'd been dating who was across the venue, met up with her, hung out with her until 9.30. At 10.07, he FaceTimed her. And he was, disor he, he was completely sober. She goes, I didn't think he had taken anything. He was just completely sober. At 10.07, he was disoriented. By 10.40, he was identified by, by um, the conscious crew. And then he, he lingered, you know, because of the chaos. So many people sick, not, not there's no medical resources. So he languished in the medical tent, seizing, dying. And then they finally get him driven to a very small hospital where Life Flight then met him and took him off to a larger level one trauma center where they worked on him. And I can't say enough about the physicians. I cannot say enough about the physicians. They, Bo was alone. Bo was alone. His he had he had he had he had uh, you know walked away from his friends to go meet up with another friend, and he got lost. And he they took him on as, as his own. And the 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 ICU, the attending physician, the nurses, they worked on him for three hours and they cried when he died because they knew that he was loved, that he, that he had a family, because they didn't know who he was John Doe when he arrived. And they knew that, that I was sitting at home, sitting at home waiting for him to come home. And they knew that he wasn't coming home to me. And it made, it, 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 it not only affects our community, the people, but these, these medical <laughs> folks that have to deal with this, it's traumatizing to them. And they see it year after year, and it never stops because you have big corporations that don't give a shit. <sighs> He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. I'm very proud of him. I stand here, stand here, and I'm extremely proud of my son. Do you have any questions? Thank you.